Hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips. And on the desk today we have another Cobra 148 GTLDX that's going to get the um, the DDS treatment. But we've also got to remove one of the most useless frequency expansions I've ever seen. But before we start, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, join Facebook, join Patreon, have a look at my website, all that lot. Well, let's get started. So, on the initial switch on, we get a lovely um, noise coming through the speaker. What seems to change when we change channel. Plays quite a nice tune, actually. So, yeah, not too bad. I suppose it's entertaining. But I've no idea what these numbers correspond to at all. All they seem to do is make nice noises. So, these so-called channels don't correspond to anything i mean that should be channel one high band and it says 37 on the display so yeah so we'll just give the radio a quick check make sure it's operational and everything seems to be operational apart from this noise coming through the speaker yeah everything's fine on sideband everything's fine on FM. Oh, you gotta love this noise. All it would have taken was a couple of capacitors to get rid of it. Alright, let's get the lid off and see what horrors we've got in here. So immediately we've got a, a beep in a bag flapping about in the breeze. Very nice. do recognize the beep and we've got the channel expansion board and we've got it connected to the PLL and you know what that's going to mean we're gonna be in a world of trouble with this and also as well somebody silicon down the lead for the frequency counter well, luckily, a bit of ISO will get rid of that. So we're not going to do an in-depth installation on this, as we've already done one. That's quite a long video. We're just going to go through it nice and quickly. So as you can see, the make of this board. And of course, we've scratched the number of the chip off, you know, because all well, the professionals scratch the numbers off the chip, you know. You know, we've got to make it so nobody can copy this wonderful design. Oh dear. Well, this is coming out anyway. And that's what I think of that. Yeah, let's scratch the numbers off the chip, you know. Absolutely brilliant. And these filed down nuts are interesting that holds the rotary encoder in place and of course somebody's silicon the rx tx led in and we've got quality chang x capacitors on the board no expense spared with this one yeah no problem absolutely highest quality and of course underneath the ribbon that goes to the pll we have some cut tracks looks like somebody's been going at it with an axe Oh, great. As soon as I lifted this ribbon up, I sigh. I thought, why? Why make such a mess? Anyway, I'm going to have to correct it. So I've removed it. And let's have a look at the damage. So, yeah, it's cut. We're going to have to fix it. And look, somebody's been really nice and actually cut this track twice, just in case it wasn't cut first time. But yeah, I'll have to remake all those tracks. So I'll fit it in my Channel 1 header, and we've remade the tracks, which you'll see in a moment. And we'll just check it's on Channel 1 midband, which is absolutely correct. KC okay, shift still works. So I've managed to restore that. And there's the work on the underside of the PLL. Now, why they didn't take the binary adders out and connect the wires into those points, I'll never know. 
but you know, all the professionals, they cut the tracks, they just love it. So there's the front display PCB with the rotary encoder and the place for, place for the RX and TX LED. No silicon required. So there's it in place, nicely screwed in place, nicely aligned. It was nice and quick this time as we do. Already worked out how to do it on the last one. And there's a DDS unit installed. I've started to wire it up. Everything's nice and secure. Well, it's not going anywhere. Now, the customer doesn't want this beep in there, so we're going to remove this. Got a lovely thick wires, you know. Makes it nice and professional. Nice these nice thick wires. Yeah, well done. But yeah, that's coming out. So we've got rid of that beep. And the customer wants a K-tone beep, so we're going to fit that. Now for this DDS to work, the 10240 has to be bang on. Now as you know, there's no adjustment for the 10240. So we have to fit one on the back of the board. Which is just there. And that's just enough to bring the 10240 down to pretty much bang on and if this is bang on everything else will be bang on so we wired up the KC shift and we wired up everything else all that needs to do now is just to remove the crystals remove that transistor and connect up our oscillator outputs just like so and that will make sure that the radios Nice and bang on. And there's our K-tone beep. Nicely secured on the side, out of the way. With nice easy access to the potentiometers to adjust the tone and the speed. Not flapping about in the breeze. Yep, very nice. And there's the radio. So, same as before, push button to your favourite channels, which are already preset, and then going all the way through. And everything on the display showing correctly. The modes. And, um, yeah, RX and TX. And the low, mid, high has been repurposed for a plus and minus 5KC. And everything else has just been left the same so the radio still got good functionality everything works fine and coarse everything's got every switch works and there we have it now yeah, just having a listen on 10 meters there Got some signals coming in. Oh, Bulgaria, very nice. Nice strong signal. Everything's looking good. Anyway, that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, join Facebook, on Patreon, buy me a coffee, have a look at my website, microchips.net. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next episode.